breathless cable news reports, and eye-popping magazine articles have ripened the Cascadia Megathrust earthquake into a grand apocalyptic fantasy. A lot of what you've heard is malarkey, but some of it is true. This video aims to set the record straight. It is based on official government reports made by professional emergency managers and dedicated scientists. You will learn Seattle's true quake dangers and what you can do to stay safe. Your odds of surviving even the worst Seattle quake are astronomically high. The real question is, what happens when the shaking is over? The threat of earthquakes around Seattle is real. If you live in King County, you have an 84% chance of experiencing at least one 6.5 magnitude quake in your lifetime. Several quake faults menace the region, but two scenarios are especially dangerous for the Seattle area. A 9.0 on the Cascadia subduction zone fault and far worse for the city, a 7.2 on the Seattle Fault. First, the infamous Cascadia 9.0 quake. This fault stretches 600 miles from Northern California, past Washington, and up into Canada. A full rip would shake the entire Pacific Northwest and be felt as far east as Idaho. Remember, if you are ever in an earthquake, drop, cover, and hold on. The shaking is projected to damage 66% of the electrical facilities in the I-5 corridor. When it stops, vast regions of Washington state will be cast into blackout darkness. The power will remain out for days in many places and for months in others. Standard household comforts will not be available. Vital outside services will also be out for the duration. Expect internet and cell phone service to be down for days. Water processing infrastructure will be damaged leaving hundreds of thousands without drinking water or working toilets. The coastal towns will be hit hardest. Tsunami waves will wash over the western shores of Washington state within 15 minutes. The damage will be concentrated on a handful of communities along the coast. Small seaside towns like Long Beach and Ocean Park will be devastated. The folks in Aberdeen have a decent chance of fleeing to higher ground before the water rolls in. The Washington coast is sparsely populated but the worst case tsunami is still projected to take thousands of lives in those localized areas. The complicated shoreline of the Puget Sound will diffuse the waves and completely protect the region's main population centers. Seattle and Tacoma will see no impact. Recognizing that a Cascadia quake is inevitable, federal and state emergency managers conducted a massive training exercise to test the region's readiness for the event. More than 230 state-level organizations and 65 federal agencies participated in the earthquake dry run. They found that government services at every level will be quickly overwhelmed by the scope of the disaster, and that citizens will be largely on their own. One big change came out of the exercise. FEMA used to tell citizens to keep three days food and water on hand for emergencies. After Cascadia Rising, they changed that. Two weeks emergency food and water is now FEMA's recommendation for people living in the Pacific Northwest. Here's why. Interstate 5 is the only north-south supply route for the region's big cities. The risk of soil liquefaction is very high at key points along this road. Soil liquefaction destroys roadways in earthquakes. The Cascadia quake is expected to damage two-thirds of this vital supply line. Interstate 90 is the region's main east-west supply route through the Cascade Mountains. Due to the steep terrain, I-90 adds landslide risks to its road closure concerns. There are smaller routes over the mountains, but they will fare no better. It will take weeks and months to repair the damage to these roads. Supply trucks and relief vehicles will be unable to enter the region. While these lifelines are severed, the Seattle area will become an inaccessible island. All the urban hospitals near Seattle should remain operational. The inland fire departments should also fare well but neither will be able to help the ravaged coastal communities due to the road damage. The projected earthquake injury numbers highlight the localized nature of the shaking danger. Statewide estimates show that thousands will need immediate first aid, another 1,200 will need hospital services, and sadly, over 440 will suffer life-threatening injuries or be killed. The Seattle and Tacoma population centers, however, seem to dodge the bullet. There, less than 100 people are projected to receive mortal injuries. Unfortunately, Cascadia is not Seattle's worst earthquake scenario. That distinction belongs to a 7.2 quake on the Seattle Fault. As you look at these numbers, there are two things to realize. First, 
The population of the Seattle area is over 3.7 million. That means your chance of surviving even the worst Seattle earthquake is over 99.9996%. Second, since you are likely to survive, you should really think about taking a first aid class. That way, you can be part of the solution when your fellow citizens need you the most. Now, a closer look at a 7.2 quake on the Seattle Fault. The epicenter of this quake sits right in the middle of the state's biggest population centers. The line cuts through West Seattle and the port, then parallels I-90, crossing the highway on Mercer Island, and finally it terminates on the far side of Lake Sammamish. 900 years ago, a 7.2 quake on this fault caused 22 feet of sudden uplift, sent two forests sliding into lakes, and welled up a terrible tsunami in the Puget Sound. Today, that 15-foot high tsunami would thrash the interior coastlines. Both Seattle and Tacoma's industrial ports would be flooded in minutes. Fortunately, the downtown core and the Space Needle would remain dry. 175 people along the shore would likely be swept into the rising water and killed. In Tacoma, an even larger area would be swamped, including parts of Interstate 5 and a good portion of Fife. If you are near salt water during a quake, the shaking may be your only tsunami warning. Get to high ground immediately. The upper floors of concrete buildings will work. Even if damaged from a quake, they are still safer than being caught in the rising waters. Stay there. Tsunami waves can roll in for hours. The areas most likely to see tsunami inundation are also the places most prone to soil liquefaction. Buildings and roads in these areas will be the first to go. This will cripple transportation in the region. Many highway bridges will be damaged. 405, I-5, I-90, and these other highways will experience damage and be closed after the quake. Travel by car will grind to a halt. Forget the 22-minute drive from Seattle to Issaquah. With the I-90 and 520 bridges down, that journey could easily turn into a 26-hour hike around the lake and through the chaos. Be prepared. Assemble a get-home kit now and keep it at your work. Smartphones will be useless. Make a family communication plan in case you get separated from your loved ones. The safest building to be in during a quake is a house. You are at least 50 times more likely to be mortally injured on your way to work or at a place of business. Even at night when most people are in bed, workplaces are still more dangerous than houses. If your inner voice is shouting a strong warning or your pets are acting strange, burn the sick day and don't go to work. Keep the kids home from school. It is much safer there. Solid science is now showing animals can sense earthquakes well before they happen. Uniformed first responders will be swamped with calls. At the same time, many area fire departments will be structurally damaged. Beyond that, thousands of natural gas lines will break and leak. This will result in hundreds of fires. Citizens will have to help each other. You will become a first responder for your coworkers and neighbors. The Community Emergency Response Team program is an excellent way for regular citizens to get disaster response training before things go south. The program teaches fire suppression, disaster first aid, and light search and rescue. Most King and Pierce County Fire Departments offer CERT classes. Many local hospitals are expected to take significant damage. To complicate their problems, much of Seattle's electricity infrastructure will be knocked out. At least a quarter of a million households will be without power immediately after the quake. Wastewater facilities will go down too, and thousands of water pipelines for drinking and for waste will be damaged. The recovery will be slow. Hundreds of thousands will be without drinking water for weeks and weeks. This is why it's so important to have at least a two-week supply of food and water on hand. Go to Costco today and buy a couple of 25-pound bags of non-perishable food and a flat of drinking water. You don't need to break the bank to be prepared. The idea that an earthquake could strike at any time can be overwhelming, but don't despair. The Seattle area has a unique secret weapon up its sleeve. Seattle's King County has the highest cardiac arrest survival rate in the world. Literally, the whole world. And it's the highest by a lot. The reason is simple. King County has an unusually high percentage of everyday citizens trained in the proper use of CPR. Each of those people recognized the need. They took the time to get certified, and they stand ready to help a stranger in a time of trouble. The people of the Northwest have always understood 
that you don't need to wear a uniform to make a difference. The threat of earthquakes is very real for Seattle, but so is the intelligence and kindness of its people. Now is the time to prepare.